Welcome to today's DataBell webinar, and thank you for attending. Today's webinar is titled Oracle BI, Migrating Oracle BI Applications and Analytics to the Cloud. And we are excited to have Christian Screen presenting, DataVail's Vice President and Practice Director for Oracle Analytics. Christian, I'll go ahead and turn it over to you. Thank you, Jane, and thank you for attending this webinar. This is a very hot topic amongst Oracle customers today, and we have a great agenda lined up for you to talk about cloud analytics, hybrid choices, how to migrate into the cloud, and of course, doing it right the first time. Because cloud solutions continue to expand into the mainstream, there's a lot of obvious value for moving your existing applications into the cloud from your on-premise solutions. And in today's webinar, we're going to talk about some of those techniques and some of the options that you have for moving your Oracle Analytics and your Oracle BI application systems into the Oracle Cloud. As Jay mentioned, my name is Christian Screen. I'm the Analytics Practice Director at DataVail. And I come to you with many years of experience in data warehousing and data integration. Also, co-author of the first book on Oracle Business Intelligence, and recently the released version of Oracle BI 12C a book that's now available. I'm also an Oracle ace and a proud member of many of the Oracle user group communities. And I'm also proud to be a managing member of DataVail. And just to give you a little bit of information about DataVail, we're a 13 plus year old organization uh, based in the data management space, delivering data services to over 300 clients uh, all over the globe. We specifically focus in a few different areas of database operations, analytics, visualizations, and data integration, as well as application management. And that, that covers your ERP systems, some CRM systems, Hyperion, SharePoint, and we also do custom development with Oracle Apex and Microsoft.net. We have lots of different capability in, within DataVail, and some of that capability is support for monitoring and supporting the Oracle Analytics applications as well as the Hyperion applications. Uh, we're able to provide capacity analytics and capacity data integration capability uh, to organizations with an infrastructure structure development and administration. For Oracle BI customers, we also have a, a decent amount of intellectual property developed by our consultants here at DataVail, and those include BI Teamwork, which is a collaborative tool that sits on top of Oracle BI for annotating and commenting, even at the cell level, your Oracle BI reports and dashboards. And we also have another tool called BI Monitor, and that's a tool developed by DataVail that helps proactively monitor your Oracle BI system, warning you of potential incidents, uh, potential issues with the server, downtimes, and it can even send email alerts proactively to your administrators so that you have a much better chance of having a high availability uptime uh, system for your analytics. We have lots of different capabilities and solutions within DataVail revolving around Oracle Business Intelligence and Analytics. Uh, we have solutions that help obviously migrate your Oracle BI applications to the cloud. Uh, we have an upgrade service solution for migrating Oracle Discover to OBIE or BI Cloud Service, as well as interactive reporting to Oracle BI. And we have several different solutions around line the business, such as HR 360 and Procurement 360 Analytics, which work in the Oracle BI Cloud Service. We also have a full suite of training um, options for Hyperion, as well as Oracle BI and Oracle Data Integrator. So if you're looking for training for your users or your administrators, look no further than DataVail. Well, let's get it started with a look into the Oracle uh, BI cloud and, and what, what Oracle BI might look like in the cloud. It's really a journey. And ultimately, Oracle has positioned itself very well in the cloud market space and around Oracle Analytics uh, infrastructure and as far as an application uh, structure, uh, it's very well suited for today's business. Some of the questions we ask and we have to ask ourselves is not only partners of Oracle, but also customers of Oracle, uh, specifically in the Oracle Analytics space, we really have to ask how much of the infrastructure do they want to maintain? 
Do they want to maintain all of it like they do on premise, just part of it, or none of it? They just want a working solution where the analytics come together, you have the data visualizations, and you have the ability to scale fairly smoothly. Well, when you ask those questions, you also have to ask several other questions, such as, are we looking to have full-blown configuration, so something that matches the, the complete flexibility you have on premise, or are you okay with some limitations in your configuration, so something more of a, a supported application. But when you're looking at the cloud, we also have discussions about, you know, are we really freeing up any of our resources? Are we, are we, are we freeing up uh, any dollars? Uh, because we still might have to go through a training process um, or, or move to other resources within the organization to potentially support uh, a cloud-based solution. Or are we shifting our priorities around? And of course, who's paying for uh, the cloud implementation or the infrastructure in the first place? Is that coming from the business or is that coming from IT? And is this a global initiative or is it a departmental initiative? So these are some questions that you might look, look at when you're talking about going into the cloud. And that's a common theme amongst the clients we've worked with where we've helped them get into the Oracle cloud. Well, one of the things you really need to look at is understanding the cloud and how it's structured from the Oracle cloud perspective. There are many options in the Oracle cloud uh, amidst analytics and planning capabilities that Oracle now offers uh, to its customers. And if we break it down, we're really looking at three different tiers or three different structures of cloud capability. One most people might be familiar with is something called SaaS, S-A-A-S, and that is software as a service. And if you look here in this diagram, this is the immediate application or customer interfacing capability that's managed for you in the cloud. So it's really any type of application for in-business users. It, for, from a technical perspective, Inter integration and interfacing can be done uh, programmatically through what they call REST interface. And for those under Oracle Analytics or EPM space, you think about uh, planning budgeting cloud service, that's something you mainly associate with SaaS. When you look more at PAS, this is what we call platform as a service. And actually BI cloud service and the Oracle Analytics cloud is under this umbrella of PaaS. And this is most likely because you have a bit more control over some of the integration capability and functionality, and you're really given the platform from which to utilize the cloud, but you have a structure around it that gives you uh, something of both an application uh, as well as a solution, uh, and it just happens to reside within the cloud. So when we talk about things like some of the security uh, cloud offerings, some of the uh, developer-based offerings, this is going to reside within PaaS. And also the, the DBAS, Database as a Service uh, offering, uh, also rolls into the PaaS uh, um, tier as well. And then lastly, we have Infrastructure as a Service, I-A-A-S. And this is very similar to uh, Amazon EC2, for those who might be familiar with it. And when we talk about storage, when we talk about uh, spinning up a, a server or server node, uh, for any type of purpose, this is where that would reside. Um, you can look at this as also what they call compute, uh, where you're looking at having a virtualized or dedicated uh, server that's in the cloud that's hosted by Oracle, and we call that infrastructure as a service. And these three different tiers are very important uh, for anyone who's looking to go into the Oracle cloud so that they can fully understand and justify uh, the purpose and the differences between on-premise and moving into the Oracle cloud. Well, why move to the Oracle Cloud? Well, there has to be some sort of justification, well, typically there is, for moving. Either it's IT's looking for infrastructure cost reduction, uh, there needs to be more flexibility uh, in data integration, uh, or the company's just upgrading in general, and there's an initiative to move to the cloud. There's many reasons why an organization might move to the cloud, uh, but we rarely see any, any, um, any move to the cloud where there's not some sort of uh, governed concept on, on the reason why to go to the cloud. Um, even though there's some great features in the cloud, uh, we don't really see uh, customers go with no business case. But what we do see quite frequently through our customers and in the marketplace today is what we call a hybrid cloud experience. And this is really an architecture 
from which customers can really dip their toes in the waters of the cloud, if you will. Um, or I guess a better analogy would be stick their fingers into the cloud a little bit uh, instead of jumping into the cloud um, uh, full bore. And the reason for that is because organizations see the advantage of going into the cloud, they hear the buzzwords, and they do see the value of, of doing so. However, the majority of their systems still will reside on premise. And so the, the initial first step of getting the most out of your technology stack investments and in talking about the cloud is to uh, start with one or two applications, such as the Oracle BI Cloud Service or, or the Oracle Analytics Cloud, and then using the Oracle technology, which gives you the ability to connect to your on-premise data sources or data warehouse, you're getting the best of both worlds. You're starting into the cloud in a very uh, small, non-invasive, non uh, low-risk sort of uh, premise, and you're utilizing your existing investments on-premise, and you're getting the best of both worlds. So you're learning about the cloud slowly, but you're not taking the big leap, creating upheaval for your organization by moving everything that supports, uh, for example, in this case, your analytics into the cloud in one big bang. After that hybrid approach, we do see clients then moving other components into the cloud, such as SBase or such as the data warehouse, uh, their data integration components. And that becomes uh, a more escalating factor as the technology gets better. And of course, the Oracle Cloud uh, becomes um, more ubiquitous. So how can we get our Oracle BI applications into the cloud? Well, we've already talked about learning the differences between the, the levels uh, of, and tier, tiers within the Oracle Cloud system, um, PaaS, IAS, and SAS, SAS. Well, you of course want to plan. And then of course, there's this idea about managing in-flight projects. Because BI and business intelligence is a program, which means it's not just one project that dies, then there's always many projects going on and developers working. So at some point, you're going to have to understand how you manage the work that's happening today on premise and eventually compile that or get everyone moved into the cloud uh, without having a, a four-week or very elongated code freeze. Uh, uh, secondly, because we're using the Oracle B applications, we have ETL, and we also have uh, a, a data warehouse. And now, uh, there's a couple different options, and we'll talk about those, but primarily, you really want to eventually use what they call the Oracle uh, Cloud Database or Database as a Service, okay, if you're using BIX as the front end. And we'll talk about the new um, Oracle or Oak Oracle Analytics Cloud uh, here in a few minutes. So BIX and Oak uh, can give you the front end for your Oracle BI system, even using Oracle BI applications. Next, you'll need, if you're going to go with the hybrid approach, keeping your, your database and your ETL on-premise, but moving the front end uh, to the cloud, you'll need to create what we call the, uh, the RPD connection pool. Um, you'll need to update that so it points to the correct database uh, on the cloud. So you'll need to update your, your RPD connection pools. And then next, you'll have to go into your Oracle BIX instance in the cloud and uh, modify the data, the data model to point to the Oracle cloud database schema that you would then have created. And the next, you can then uh, ask yourself the question, how would you get your data uh, from ETL data warehouse into the Oracle BI Cloud Service? Well, those who have looked at the Oracle BI Cloud Service, you know that the Oracle BI Cloud Service has a, a schema that's given with it that's only about 50 gigabytes. And most Oracle BI applications, projects that uh, we've engaged upon, uh, the data warehouse uh, goes way beyond 50 gigabytes uh, in storage once you begin moving the data. So these are all concepts that are going to have to happen if you're going to use BIX on the cloud um, using the Oracle BIX system. But there's several options when we talk about the OBIA system, and I, I alluded to that again, or uh, alluded to that before. Uh, so you can use BIX, which is the BI Cloud Service, to support your platform. And you can have individuals use uh, Excel uh, files, and you can upload data into BIX for a small storage base. But if you're using Oracle BI applications, you need to go a little bit more robust. And so if you're moving the data warehouse 
into the cloud, you're definitely going to need to use the database as a service as well. So now you've got two different pods or two different um, areas within the Oracle Cloud Service that you're engaged with. Data Cloud Service and Database as a Service. Next, uh, you're going to have the ability, next option is the ability to have BIX, uh, in, which is in the cloud, the Oracle Cloud, pointing to the on-premise database or data warehouse. And we, we alluded to that earlier. Uh, another option is to use the Oracle Compute uh, cloud services. And this is where you can actually get a cloud-based virtual machine, for example, and you can actually install Oracle BI, the entire platform, just like it's your own server in your own data center. Okay, And that means the Oracle BI analytics uh, platform or the portal rather, the portal where you actually access your dashboards and reports, they'll be visible to you because you basically have an entire server standing in the cloud for you where you've installed Oracle BI applications, the portal, the ETL, and then of course your database would be uh, the Oracle database as a service, uh, cloud service. But you could also then go with BIX with the Oracle Compute. So you could uh, basically, again, using the Oracle Compute almost like it's a server in your data center, you would then just front end that uh, with BIX because you're using the Oracle database as a service, and BIX can point directly to the Oracle database as a service uh, for its data and its metadata. And then, of course, you do have the ability to go with just a, a pure private or public hosted cloud. And, you know, these are some other systems that you could use. Uh, some data centers um, solutions, uh, Amazon um, would be another that you could potentially use. And those are great options as well if you're looking to leave the, the Oracle stack. So we don't want to uh, dismiss that as being a, a viable option. Well, you heard me allude to the Analytics Cloud Service or the Oracle Analytics Cloud Service, uh, OAC, um, OAC for short. So you heard me allude to the Oracle Analytics Cloud Service, or OAK for short. And this is a new offering from Oracle, and it provides us with also S-Base Cloud Service. We have several customers who integrate S-Base and, uh, and planning into their RPD. So one of the other questions that we get often is, if we have, the customer has S-Base uh, connectivity within their RPD, then how can they also get that into the cloud? So this is going to be uh, the going forward direction for S-Base in the cloud. And because you would then have your own running instance that so you could load your S-Base cubes into the cloud, this would be another way that you could, could conduct that tighter integration, um, moving your, your Oracle BI applications and Oracle BI system into the cloud. And there's some other options that are available today for keeping your S-Base system uh, on-premise and having the Oracle BIX or the, uh, the Oracle Compute uh, or OBIEE configuration connect with your on-premise S-Base cloud service. And that goes beyond the scope of this webinar. Well, if you're just using BIX, ultimately BI cloud service gets you a software as a service footprint. It means you're ready to go into the cloud. And we definitely recommend this for Customers that are on legacy versions of OBIEE, they have uh, you know a, a dozen or a few dozen customers internally that want the newer visualizations. Uh, they're not sure if they want to undergo an on-premise upgrade, and they want to get into the now data visualizations and, and the whole kit and caboodle. So, just using Bix, that's a great option uh, for those type of customers. You get instant on mobile capability, so users who have been wanting to get their analytics on the go. That's immediately available and configured for you. It comes with uh, tight security, so you've got your SSL security for those uh, customers who are worried about accessing uh, the data remotely or off-site. Uh, you also get a limited use database schema. Again, I think I mentioned it has a 50 gigabyte max capacity, so if you're doing something very robust, well, you can still use BIX, but you're going to need to then get the database as a service um, uh, option as well so that you can scale beyond the 50 gigabytes. And 
that database schema gives you really little control of the data. I mean, you can load data into the system. You can use Excel files to load data, and uh, individuals can really do that self-service ad hoc analysis that the lines of business are looking to do these days. And that's fantastic uh, for a lot of organizations today, just to be nimble and flexible. Well, there's a lot of basics when you're talking about customers who have an existing on-premise Oracle BI solution, and they're looking to move into the cloud. Well, again, when we think about an existing solution, we have to think not about just the platform, the dashboards, and reports. We have to think about the data sources. So I, I keep revisiting this idea that if you, if you have a decent amount of data, over 50 gigabytes, and you're looking to do uh, much tighter data integration, um, some sort of real-time feed into the cloud, you're going to also need the database as a service instance. Um, because you were talking about an on-premise Oracle BI solution, you're also going to have to have uh, your on-premise RPD ready to go. So uh, you can try to clean that up a little bit. Uh, you know, the, the more concise, the better. But BIX uh, can handle, uh, you know, a very robust RPD. But uh, we, when we utilize our service at, at client sites, we try to go through a health check and we try to clean up the RPD as much as possible in advance. You have to update the RPD then um, in the connection pools to basically align with the connection of the database as a service uh, cloud database that you're going to be moving into. And again, this is assuming that you, you've already moved your data there. You have a path to move your data into that location. Uh, again, we'll talk about how we can connect to an on-premise database in a few moments. Um, once you have that connection pool updated to point to the cloud uh, database, uh, then you can simply upload that RPD to BIX. And because you've in advance made that connection change inside your RPD, uh, it should automatically connect to that database as a service cloud instance. And um, once you upload it using the snapshot functionality, it should be ready to go. And once it's ready to go, you can go, you can go ahead and create new reports and data visualizations in, in BIX. Um, the key thing to, to note there is that uh, once you upload that on-premise RPD, uh, you're not able to do any modeling in the cloud BIX environment. So you would really be utilizing your on-premise modeling, and then for any changes, you would go through that same process again to upload it into BIX. Well, if you're using an on-premise database, like I mentioned, Oracle's created a, a very fascinating, secure way to do that uh, with low latency, actually. And again, you're getting the BIX environment. That's the portal. That's the platform. That's the SaaS offering. What you need to do inside of your uh, control panel for BIX is you're creating a public key. Uh, it's an SSH encrypted um, or SHA encrypted key uh, that allows you to have a tight connectivity between uh, the different systems um, within the, the Oracle space. And then you'll be able to get uh, your on-premise database settings. So right now it's only for Oracle, but uh, I'm sure in the future that might change. And then you'll install uh, what's called an RDC application. So this is Oracle solution because you're saying as uh, a customer, you're probably using Oracle BI today. You have WebLogic. Uh, and so forth, you have some Oracle tools. So you install this RDC application into, the, into WebLogic, which is your on-premise solution. And then you'll go and create a data source within WebLogic uh, that points to your on-premise database that you're connecting to. Uh, then you'll go into the RPD, uh, the admin tool, and you'll load uh, something called the data sources, Java data sources, uh, based on which you'll update your RPD connection and then once you do that, you can then follow the steps uh, that I previously mentioned in the other slide. And you can save that RPD and deploy it into BIX. And at that point, you're ready to go again to create some reports and dashboards. So really what Oracle's done here is they've, they've really set the expectation that by going into the cloud, you can be nimble and your expectations of doing this hybrid approach can be met and be met fairly with a fairly straightforward manner. But um, obviously, you can see within two slides, so not a lot of steps or information required, you can have your data loaded in the cloud, connected to the database of service, or you could connect directly from the cloud to your on-premise database very securely. And that is fantastic, ladies and gentlemen. That gives us that hybrid cloud experience we're looking for.
Well, there are some limitations if you go with BIX, because remember, BIX is a software as a service solution. And this is just by way of setting expectations if you're coming from an on-premise uh, Oracle BI uh, implementation and solution that you're, you've been used to. Now, uh, right now, as the solution stands, you don't get things like watch list or segmentation or scorecard. And in our experience, this is a, these are seldom used features by clients anyway. Uh, so it's not a big disruptive uh, difference between the BIX environment and the on-premise environment uh, based on just not having uh, counterpart functionality for those type of functions. And you know, I wouldn't be lying to you if I said that there's even more considerations for on-premise movement into the cloud. So I'll try to add some color to that. Well, when you're talking about a lift and shift, right? so we're lifting from the on-premise environment and we're shifting in the cloud mode, um, it, it is ideal, uh, but you know, when you look at lift and shift, uh, there's a few things that need to be addressed. So on-premise, if you're on an old version of Oracle BI, like version 10 or 11.1.1.3, you're going to need to upgrade in advance in order to get this thing uh, moved into the cloud. And uh, for the most part, that's pretty straightforward. Uh, you can always get assistance with that from a yeah, partner like DataVail, who, who's done that many times. Um, and then if you're going to look to deploy Oracle BI or the application solution uh, into the cloud, uh, the best thing to do is to do it on-premise first. If you, if you know that you have Oracle BI already um, and you, you've got some data integration there um, that's already built out, make sure you're good to go there. If you want the Oracle BI applications, which is a much, much more robust solution, you have a few options. We alluded to the Oracle Cloud Compute, um, but if you have Oracle BI applications already, make sure that's fully vetted. It works as designed before you move it into the cloud. Um, you don't want there to be any sort of red herrings or any sort of um, you know, false, positive, false positives uh, that cause you any issues uh, down the road. So make sure it's fully vetted on site, particularly for the Oracle BI applications. Um, we talk about security. If you haven't gone through a security matrix plan for authentication, authorization, you'll definitely want to hash that out prior to moving the Oracle BI applications in particular into the cloud. And then of course, um, when you talk about lifecycle management, uh, from an administrative perspective, again, work with a partner like DataVail or, or definitely understand in advance how you're going to move things uh, to and fro. If you're going to move, um, you know, the RPD and, some, and you're thinking about, hey, we've got a lot of web catalog content reports and dashboards, uh, really sit down and iron that out uh, so that you meet the expectations uh, in advance. And then lastly, just plan accordingly. Uh, you want to make sure that you, if you're moving whole hog into the cloud, you might be familiar with having a dev or two dev environments, a test, a QA, and a production environment. And you can do that on-premise uh, with relatively ease because we've been building these systems on-premise for you know, decades. But when you're in the cloud, especially with Bix, you get what you call a pod. And a pod really just has uh, one sandbox environment and one production environment. So one's used for development. And then you would then do your migration or your push to the production part of that pod. And so keep in mind, if you wanted to have a test or, or multiple development environments, you would have to then purchase another pod uh, in the cloud for BIX. That is, um, if you're using Oracle Cloud Compute, uh, you of course could spin up another uh, virtual machine, Linux virtual machine, and install the Oracle BI solution there. So you, you have some options, but you really need to think, think some of that through. When we talk about the Oracle uh, data warehouse in particular that comes with the Oracle BI applications, this is really where uh, your IT administrators and even some of your, your functional business people uh, get a little shaky. They're not sure what's going to happen and how we can get our source system data like our ERP, HCM, uh, our financials data, our procurement data from our on-premise system into the cloud. Well, to answer that in a few bullets on this slide, the best way to do that is to use a replication system, such as Oracle Golden Gate or DB Visits Replicate tool. And so these are very synonymous tools. Uh, one is an Oracle tool, Oracle Golden Gate. One is, is uh, from an organization called DB Visit, uh, which works really well also. And so the idea 
is that there's several methods to, to get data from on-premise into the cloud. Uh, you could do this in a batch process, and depending on what type of data it, that, the, that it is, some organizations do not want to do a batch process, you know, think nightly loads of data, if they want something relatively real-time or near real-time to be available for them in their cloud system. So that's why you turn to a replication system. So basically, as operational data is saved in procurements, um, someone cuts uh, a purchase uh, requisition or a purchase order, uh, you know, the procurement team or spin team or the business team, uh, they want to see that available if they have a report that's out there, you know, a couple times a day probably. So batch mode sometimes just won't be the, the fit for the solution. So you have to go to something more of a replication solution. You can kind of see a diagram here on the left-hand side. When a change is made, uh, the data get pump, gets pumped through a secure channel uh, into the Oracle uh, public cloud system, and then it's replicated onto the, the target system. And you can take that a step further with Oracle Analytics, where uh, once it gets pumped through, there's a, a, an ETL job that's continually spinning throughout the day, just like you would on on-premise, and the data gets loaded into a data warehouse fully aggregated and accessible. And of course, um, being able to drill down to the underlying um, sub-detail as well. So very impressive. And uh, so it's definitely a solid aim to get this data from on-premise into the cloud for something of real-time delivery. Uh, Oracle BI, uh, BIX also has several methods for moving and syncing data as well. Uh, as you might be able to see here, you can directly import data into the BIX cloud service you can use a REST API. So there's several ways you can interact with the, the cloud service. You can even use Oracle Data Integrator, uh, or there's an on-premise uh, data sync tool, and that, that can move your data at a frequency that you determine uh, into the cloud uh, services. So a lot of flexibility, a lot of options here. Well, when you talk about getting data there, we obviously need to have security. So uh, there's the ability to have a stabilization of data movement through a VPN tunnel. Uh, you can also use the data sync, as I mentioned before, which is uh, an, an on-premise tool or a tool that can sit somewhere uh, on a server. And then there's a replication option. So looking at replication, obviously you're looking at a little bit more of a project, but that's where that seamless solution comes, uh, comes through. If you have on-premise, uh, let's say financials, but you've already moved to the Oracle HCM cloud solution and you want to combine that data um, to some degree. Uh, maybe you've got sales cloud and maybe you have costing and pricing cloud. Um, you want to integrate that. That's where your replication capability comes into play. I mentioned earlier about Oracle Cloud Compute and for those familiar with Amazon EC2 services, it's very similar. It's a, it's a way to have uh, direct uh, root level server access where the server is just in the cloud and it's, and it's hosted by Oracle, but it's, it's your, your virtual machine or your, your dedicated server that's in the cloud. And what's really great about this capability for getting the Oracle BI applications into the Oracle Compute Cloud is that it, it's almost like it's on-premise for you. So you're going to download the Oracle BI application binaries you can use wget uh, as a Linux command to get, get that there. So you're, you're using Oracle Enterprise Linux on uh, most of these basic uh, virtual machines you can stand up in the Oracle Compute Cloud. Uh, and then you're going to also go through the same process. You're going to install ODI, what, you know, the web logic, and go through the full configuration instance on your Oracle Compute Cloud instance. You have to stand up also your database as a service cloud, and then optionally use the... Um, the SDS if you're looking to do the real-time uh, analytics capability with something like Golden Gate or DB Visit. And of course, Oracle has even delivered uh, a, a bar file that's pretty much ready to go for you to integrate your OBI solution into BIX. So that's really cool because it gives you this quick start saying that, hey, look, here's a BIX complete formatted, ready to go um, model that aligns with the Oracle BI applications. So you just need that the data warehouse. Um, uh, connectivity and you're off to the races once you have all that established. And what we did find out is that even though you can install the full-blown Oracle BI uh, implementation of um, Oracle BI apps on the Oracle Cloud, 
uh, eventually we read that um, they're going to try to remove the ability to show the portal uh, on the Oracle Compute Cloud, which kind of leads you to go more into the, the BIX. Um, SaaS solution is your front end. And just to kind of illustrate what that, that looks like, um, you know, with replication and all, you're looking at having your platform as a service here. So you've got BIX and you have your database uh, instance. And then you can see your schemas here, right? Your data warehouse, your SDS, your basic BI ACM, your ODI schemas that you would see just like on premise. And then, of course, you'd have any of your other SaaS offerings here, you know, Taleo or HCM Cloud, so forth and so on. And then through replication and so forth, you can even bring that data through and see all that in BIX. And then, of course, through replication or, or because you're using a data warehouse, however you're looking at using it, um, wherever your source data is coming from, you can get your on-premise source data into the data warehouse using that same process because you basically have a, an Oracle uh, server in the cloud that's yours, dedicated to you uh, um, for your Oracle BI apps instance. Well, we mentioned uh, before that the Oracle cloud is, is a fully engineered cloud system. Uh, it really has uh, basically everything an organization would need to run a fully robust, scalable uh, environment uh, for their organization. And again, you see some of the key services here, software as a service, platform as a service, infrastructure as a service. Uh, but as everything is turning into a service these days, we get to the point where we have data as a service and information as a service. Uh, so it's getting really impressive what's happening in the cloud these days. Well, just to try to drive that education a little further, now that we've talked about the, the few options you have for moving Oracle B applications into the cloud, uh, there's different drivers for each area of the organization, uh, the different types of users in the organization. And uh, depending on where you're at, you know, that's your job to understand uh, what the, the key drivers are for those users and what their focus is uh, for moving into the cloud. So we, we talk, alluded to this a little bit before. Are we looking to save uh, dollars? Are we looking to you know, have a, a concentrated area for, for developing applications and work with applications? Or are we looking to speed to delivering the solutions for our internal business users, um, you know, making sure that we have a solution for data visualizations and uh, can quickly make sense of our data and our Excel spreadsheets and, and get that into something that we can share with other people without having to go through long um, you know, development processes, asking IT, you know, can you make a change? And it's, it's five weeks to, to modify a column. But, Regardless of what type of user uh, you are, uh, I think we really have to look at going into the cloud and get, getting started with a different type of mentality. Well, if you think about historically, like where we are and where we're going, if you look at this uh, traditionally, everything in the past was in silos. And by past, I'm talking about the last, let's say, you know, from five years ago to you know, two decades ago. Uh, everything was kind of siloed, right? Everything was dedicated. It was it was static. Um, you know, we were in, you know, we we're spread all over the place. Everything was kind of uh, heterogeneous. Uh, and now, you know, a few years after that, so this is maybe, you know, late '90s, maybe early 2000s, things started getting consolidated, right? We're saying, you know, virtualization has come along from a technology stack perspective and capability. Uh, let's share, you know, our, our our development. Let's share our infrastructure. Let's get under one storage platform. Let's be more dynamic. And of course, let's standardize wherever we can. Okay, that's, that's cost savings as well. And then there's been this attempt in the last five years or so, maybe even eight to 10, to get into more of a private cloud, right? There's the benefits of getting something that's been you know, in a hosted, managed sort of um, situation, um, self-service, uh, something that scales, something that, that really starts driving us in a direction of change. Uh, and then, of course, the idea of a public cloud came along. And this, in my opinion, kind of scared people a little bit, especially in the finance sector. Is it safe? No, is, is it or is it not safe to move our, our data into the cloud and where everybody can see it? And we're scared about security. Well, I think over the last several years, uh, two, three years, I think Oracle's really made a great, uh, and, uh, great leap, and they strive to really show people that the cloud is secure. I think they use the term bank-grade security for accessing the cloud. And I alluded to some of that earlier. 
about some of the, the encryption keys that you need to connect the two uh, cloud interfaces and multiple um, cloud interfaces together. But the, the public cloud, you know, that offered a, a shared standardized way to do things. And now what we're seeing is much more of this, this hybrid cloud capability, right? We're, we're federating uh, across different cloud systems, even different vendors. Uh, we're looking at you know, combining uh, data sets, a lot of in interoperability with data integration. Uh, so think of an example of having a customer who's got Oracle HCM, but they're using ADP to do their, their payroll. So to do any type of analytics on you know, employee, employee uh, payroll type data, well, you need to combine those two uh, types of, of, of cloud systems. And you can do that in the cloud. And you need integration capability to do that. So all that is, is now available. And, uh, and on top of that example, and now we're pulling you know, perhaps uh, learning management data from our on-premise solution or another cloud solution that's hosted by another vendor. And we want to check in on employee stats of you know, what level or what they've passed within the learning management steps. And it gets really interesting, uh, but you know, obviously the, the, the capabilities are going to grow with the technology. Uh, they're there today to do that type of thing, that type of interoperability. Uh, but it just shows you how far we've come into the cloud and being more flexible, of course. Well, when I think of moving into the cloud, at some point you have to define success. It might mean something different for your your uh, your, your CHO, your CHRO, uh, or your CISO, or even your CFO and CIO uh, from a cloud initiative. And what we do when we work with clients, when we migrate them to the cloud and back and forth and work with their interoperability, uh, we try to determine factors up front. We just try to determine qualitative and quantitative metrics. So uh, what were the original qualitative metrics that we aim for? So if you don't define these up front as part of your business plan, then you'll never know if you actually reach there once you are at some point in your cloud integration. So are we aiming for a reduction of IT spend uh, or support, uh, stability, uh, stable access to the BI solution? Are we trying to reduce time to delivery? And then some other questions you could ask yourself regarding quantitative metrics is how things like load times, right? Going into the cloud, we, are we reducing those times by 30% or some, some sort of uh, metric? Are we increasing user adoption because we've increased the speed to which we can deliver. What about cost? Okay. Over you know, a three, five, ten year period, how much costs are being reduced and where is that cost being reduced from? And ultimately, I think really you just care if the thing works. So you, you've done an implementation to get yourself into the cloud, your organization in the cloud. Does it work? Is it stable? And do the users know the difference and do they care? Because if you're providing a different type of value to your internal organization, but it works and it works well, and it satisfies a lot of those other questions from a qualitative and quantitative perspective, well, at the end of the day, I, I have to say that if it works and the customers are happy with it, that's usually a good thing. And if you can save some dollars along the way, that's even better. Well, what's really next for uh, cloud success and what's really next for your organization. I've given you a lot of options here and uh, a little bit of education around the Oracle uh, cloud system and a lot of options around how you can get into the Oracle BI cloud service either directly if you're not a, an existing Oracle Analytics customer or if you have Oracle Analytics on-premise today and or, or Oracle BI applications on premise today and you're really curious about how to get into the cloud and what your options are and what the best architecture will be for you for the first six months and then you know for the next two years or three years and going forward building out a roadmap into the cloud hybrid architecture integration architecture interoperability uh, I, I think these are things that customers today are looking for and looking for a partner to help them out with so if that's next on your roadmap, definitely reach out to us at DataVail, datavail.com, your data management provider and trusted advisor, as well as strategic partner for all things data analytics and data management. Thank you for your time today listening to this webinar. 
We hope you learned a lot, and we hope to hear from you soon.